time to finally get the front end tore apart and all lightened up so we can get this put back on the truck. We're gonna remove for sure the inner fender wells, the old battery box. We're gonna get rid of our makeshift fuel cell mount. We're gonna cut these wings off for the old radiator mount since we're running a Chevy style or racing style radiator that mounts in a channel. And then we're gonna get this all cleaned up and painted and set the front end back on the truck. I'm gonna go ahead and get started tearing this apart. So if you're following the no-name national guys, you're probably hearing some talk about snowballs. Well, I kind of have one of my own growing here. I've gotten used to working on the engine and working on this truck in this configuration. And I'll be honest, I'm kind of dreading putting the front wrap back on it because then it's going to be in my way when I'm working on it. I've been dreaming, I guess. There's a few things that stop us from easily pulling the front wrap off. One was wiring. That's pretty much taken care of. We've got two plugs that don't go to the front, the front wrap completely in that plug on the firewall, but I could easily just uncut that zip tie, unplug the wipers, and unplug the tail lights down there. So that's one obstacle that's already pretty much been dealt with. The second is there's two bolts on the fenders. One of them is underneath that cow piece. The other one's not. If this was a use it every day, daily driver street car, probably not a great idea to have one bolt in the top of the fender. But for what we're gonna do with it, I think one bolt is more than sufficient. So we can just trim this off so it clears that cow and it's got a convenient little rub mark where the cow was sitting on here. We can just trim that off and one bolt on the top, so that's that taken care of. There's two bolts in the bottom, but they're pretty easy to get to. And I'm not thinking like easy lift off every time we bring it in from a pass to work on it in the pits. I'm thinking about we've got to adjust the valves or we've got to do some type of major maintenance. Quickly, in less than 30 minutes, pull the front wrap off and have it in this configuration to work on it. The most challenging at this point is going to be the radiator because the radiator is fully supported in the radiator support. Imagine that. And it also holds the front of the fenders. Well, there's a ton of bolts in the front of the fenders and that's more than what I want to do. So what I'm thinking is if I can somehow cut the radiator support apart so that this top shell that holds the grill, the front of the fenders, the headlights and everything comes off and the radiator support, the part that actually holds the radiator stays with a couple of bolts that are easy to get to, I'm thinking I'll be golden. So I'm tossing some ideas around in my head right now. I just wanted to bring you guys up to speed. I think we're going to go for it. I think we're going to try to figure it out. And kind of as my backup. If it doesn't work out, I have another radiator support out there and the extra parts for extra parts. And we can go back to stock if we have to. I have a plan. If you look in here, you can see our original radiator mount bolts were there. And this bottom bar is a piece of tubing, basically, that's formed by a couple of pinch welds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut along the top of it, make it an actual pinch weld here, up the side here, and then across the top here, and cut all of that out, and that leaves a big open space for our radiator to go. That leaves plenty of support for the sides of the fenders, the centerpiece, the top will have plenty of support to support the top of the fenders, and then we're gonna drill this, this is three layers thick right here, in this corner here, and it's welded to this part of this bracket. We're gonna drill that out, and we're gonna mount a bolt using some CJ7 body mounts. This will go on a bracket that we're gonna bolt, that we're gonna make, and then bolt to the side of the frame up here, somewhere in this neighborhood, wherever it actually lines up and works out well. And then for the radiator, 
We've got our original brackets that I made on the bottom holding it in here and it's just being held by the radiator hose right now. Once we get the front wrap set back on, wherever we have room, we're gonna bend some type of bar that's gonna come up somewhere around the center and back down to the other side and we'll put one mount on the top to hold the radiator in there. And then obviously the, everything's gonna get all tightened up. That'll hold the radiator and it'll be completely separate from the front wrap so we can put the front wrap on and off without having to disturb the, the coolant in the motor or take the radiator out. That's the plan. Well, it's all cut out of there. Uh, when I was cutting that bottom piece here, I was just using the guard as kind of a spacer to keep me above that pinch weld. I kind of went off on the ends a little bit, but I think it'll be all right. Got a little bit more cleaning up to do in here. Um, definitely have a lot of deburring to do around the edges here. But first, we're gonna set this on there and test it and see if it fits. Okay, we're gonna have to rethink our radiator mount. I'm gonna have to move the radiator back enough so that I have room to build some type of tube support in the front of it, but that's okay. That's not that big a deal. Fits good. We got the front end set back on here and all we've done is I went ahead and put the bolts in the back, the four bolts that are gonna hold the back of this on and took a tape measure and just measured from the corner here to the corner back there and squared this up so the front end should be straight. We added our spacers to get our height pretty close to where it needs to be. It lines up pretty well with the doors and the rockers. So we're gonna go ahead and make the brackets that are gonna become our radiator support mounts. From the factory, I think they wanted you to do this because they already have a nice hole drilled through two layers of the sheet metal right here. If you look right under there, so you can see they have this hole, it's pre-drilled through two layers of the metal here. We're just gonna finish punching that out and that'll be a perfect place for our body mount. To make our bracket, we're just gonna take our body mount bushing and lay it on here and trace around it. And then take our square off the square edge of this metal, line it up with the edge of that bushing draw that line there. And 
and then take our bushing back, put it in the center. We use the one that doesn't have a pin in it. Trace out the hole in the middle. Okay. And then this is going to be the left side. And it needs to be two and a quarter from the center of that hole to the outside of the, to the frame. So we got to make our mark right there. That's the outside of the bend. This is 3 16 so it'll actually have to be just a little bit short of that. The way my bender bends is the line becomes the inside of the bend. So with 3 16 plate, it needs to be 3 16 less than that. Mark that. And then just for safety's sake, we're not going to drill our hole until after we get this cut out and bent and clamped to the frame. That way we can get our hole in exactly the right spot. So our mark is, this is moving around in there so it's not perfect. We're going to center it side to side and take the average of all those marks. I don't have the exact right hole saw so we're going to have a little bit of play in the bushing anyway. It'll be fine. That gives us a little bit of adjustment if we didn't get it exactly perfect. We're just using a tape measure to line this all up. Remember that. I think it might be time for a new hole saw. That'll give us a little adjustment. I think that'll work for the mount. Now we just have to trim off the bottom and figure out where our holes need to be. There's one hole here that we'll use. Maybe we might not use that one. We might go one. There's a cross member behind here so we got to be careful that we can get the nuts on there. Maybe one there and one there. A little bit of a diagonal pattern there. Okay. Remember what I said about the cross member being in the way? I did a good job of hitting it dead on. I think I can still get it together. All right, one side's mounted. Just got to take the bracket back off, trim off the bottom of it, and paint it. We got both of our body mounts or radiator support mounts on there. It's pretty rigid. I'm happy with it. So if you look under here, I changed the bolt pattern. I don't like how far back this one is or how I, I wish it was easier to do it differently, but with bolt holes that are already in the frame and that cross member, there's just not really a better way to do that. It'll be fine, it'll hold it. When we take this back off, I'll cut those off and paint the brackets up. But the next thing we gotta do is we gotta figure out how to mount the radiator. So if we look over here where it's currently sitting, we have no room for anything in front of it to hold it on there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use more Jeep CJ bushings and we're gonna mount a plate in the original bolt for the radiator support and then move the radiator back about two inches and give us room to make a hoop in here to put an upper radiator mount on. So that's our next step is get the radiator out of the way and make our plates. I have a plan. I cut this 3 16 plate out. I've got just a Jeep bushing, rubber bushing under there. It's got plenty of movement, so it'll be okay. And then we'll mount, weld this on the front of it like that. And that gives us a place for the radiator to sit. 
And then this plate over here can be where we weld our hoop for the front of it on. I'm gonna go ahead and get these welded on before we put them in there. So this is gonna be the top mount for our hoop for the front of our radiator. I keep saying hoop. I wish I had a bender and I could make it nice and round, but I can't. So it's just gonna be three pieces of straight pipe. But I wanna be able to bolt something like this. Not this one, we're gonna have to remake this because we need it not only to go forward, but also go back now. Cause we're not gonna rivet the radiator to this. So we want this to bolt on there like that and Obviously, we could tap this. This is like 075 wall pipe, but I don't trust that. So we're going to use some serrated lock nuts, and we're going to just drill a hole and weld them in here. And on this welded pipe, it has a nice straight weld bead right there, and that's what I'm going to use to get my, both of my holes in the same orientation. You guys are probably gonna have a hard time hearing me because my phone died and we're on Amber's iPhone now and we don't have a microphone set up for that. So we got our little bracket made, got our pipe bolted in it and it's just sitting on the radiator precariously balanced with the hammer holding it down. I took some measurements and I got a rough idea of the length. The legs need to be about 22 inches or a little over 22 inches and they need to have this angle on the bottom of them. So I'm gonna get the chop saw set up and cut two pieces about 22 inches with this angle on the bottom of them and then we'll have to make a cope on the top for the bar on the top.
Now we just need to see how long it actually takes to take it from race trim to front end sitting next to the truck so we can work on the engine. Purely for science. I've got the tool set up. Pause the video right now and comment below how long you think it's going to take us. We added the wiring and some ground wires and the, the catch can for the radiator. So there's a few more things that we've added that we've got to undo in order to take this front wrap off now. So plus it's a little heavier because it's got a few more things installed. We're going to see. Okay, Amber, whenever you're ready, start the timer. It took longer for Amber to start the timer. It's going to take us to take the front wrap off. And we're not doing this like we're trying to do a NASCAR pit stop either, so. Unplug that wiring. I think it took me longer to get the wiring undone than to, to take the whole wrap off the last time. And we're also not trying to drop all of our bolts in the grass either. Oh no. Do what? Of course I don't have the right wrench for that. set to go. He goes to that side.
Travis. I'm gonna say four minutes and 41 seconds. 4.44. I saw the timer. I mean, so that was obviously a leisurely pace. We weren't trying to rush. We picked up all of our bolts as we went. It could be done a lot faster than that if we had to. But either way, compared to what it takes to take the front wrap off of one of these stock, that's quick disconnect. See you soon.